Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is. <laughs> Great. Welcome, everyone. My name is Helen Freeman. I'm the Director of Development here at Historic Districts Council. Thank you for coming out for tonight's uh, conference program, Sustaining Public Housing, a virtual tour of the rehabilitation of Harlem River houses and other packed developments. Um, before I turn it over to Mark Ginsburg of uh, Curtis and Ginsburg Architects. Uh, just want to remind you of some upcoming HDC programming. Uh, next Tuesday, June 28th, we will be having our Grassroots Preservation Awards. Uh, you can visit our website for more information. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Thank you, Helen. So hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, I'm going to talk largely about Harlem River Houses, which is, I know, largely what you're interested in. But I first want to give some background of where things are with NYCHA and RAD, because it is not a totally pretty picture. So since um, 1980, the federal government has starved NYCHA for both operating and capital funds. Public housing was largely built with federal financing. And until about 1980, it was pretty well funded by the federal government. But we now have 40 years of defunding. Uh, and NYCHA has taught, said they need $40 billion to get the projects to a state of good repair. But understand that doesn't mean improving accessibility, energy efficiency, low carbon future, uh, security improvements, upgrades for residents and trash, mail, uh, et cetera. And so I think the number is probably closer to between 60 and $80 million. And um, it's a lot of money and they don't have it now. Uh, so just in halls and lobbies, so these are just some pictures. A lot of the hallways are not well lit, are narrow. Uh, mailboxes are small, don't have package, package box, um, do not meet accessibility code. Uh, and the as I show some pictures, the defunding of NYCHA, the city and state till recently did not want to step up because they didn't have the money. Um, on the left is a laundry room. Many of the laundry rooms are no longer laundry rooms, which is a problem. On the right is a community room, which has been used for furniture storage. Uh, on the right, you can see a roof with major ponding. On the left, you can see how this building has been Pat, the brick has been patched significantly. We are seeing buildings where we're having to take the brick off because it is so deteriorated. Uh, and uh, this is not unusual. And facade consultant on another development seven years ago said 10 to 15 years from now, if you, we haven't done overcladding, we're going to have to remove the brick. Uh, now, NYCHA has one really wonderful attribute, which is it has a lot of mature trees, as you'll see in the pictures. But NYCHA loves fences in the landscaping. Uh, also, people will throw trash in the landscaping, as you can see, or out of the windows. And so the landscape is often not very usable. And just to give an idea of the problem, this is not for the full period, but you see the NYCHA capital needs versus the five-year capital funding. And this explains why the buildings are falling apart. Also, just to understand, NYCHA has about 180,000 units. Uh, they project, I think I have a typo here, it should be 62, not 72,000 units can go in the PACT-RAD program. Uh, another 25 
thousand will go into the public benefit corporation or can go into it that was just passed by the state legislature. And that leaves a gap. Now, they do have some other money. So the gap is in 83,000 units, but there is a gap. And money is going to be an ongoing issue because you need to not only repair it, but then maintain it. I also just want to say, because this will be tied into some of the theme, that I think climate change is the existential issue of our times. And so decarbonization, electrification is really important. Now, the PACT RAD program, well, it's called RAD everywhere else but New York City, but New York City to be different calls it the PACT program. Uh, and as I said, 60, they're planning to convert 62,000 units. What happens with this is a private developer or developers take over the operation and get a long-term lease, renovate the buildings and operate the buildings. If they don't do a decent job, NYCHA can take the buildings back. Um, and there are already uh, a number of buildings about 30,000 units that have been converted. Now conversion, so Harlem River houses has been converted, but we then have a two to three year renovation process. So it's been converted, but the renovations have just started. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Baychester Murphy, which was a PAC project that we completed about two years ago. Uh, and in this, uh, we got a, a a projected 20% en uh, energy carbon reduction. We are overcladding new windows, new roofs, renovated the apartments, upgrading of the heating system, but we kept the existing steam system, new mailboxes, upgraded lobbies, uh, reopened the laundry room, and as you see, transformed the site. So as you can see on the top are before and then on the bottom are after pictures of, this is the lobby in one of the corridors. This is the entrance. We pushed out the entrance to create a recycling room as well as uh, modern mailboxes, which take as I, three to four times the linear feet of a traditional one. Something that I think is very important, if you visit most NYCHA buildings, you can't tell the address from the street or even from a distance. So having a large numbers of the address, um, we overclad the building, as you can see here, which had three pluses. One is it lowered our energy consumption. Two, uh, it, we repaired the, the existing facade and overclad it so there will be much lower costs for local law 11 or the fist cycles where every five years the facade has to be inspected and repaired. And three, it doesn't look like NYCHA. And I think that is psychologically important for the residents as well as the neighborhood. And then here is another image of the site and the entrances. And as you can see, we we had really great trees to work with, but we got rid of a lot of the fences. We created this trellis space, as you can see, did pavers, have, have plantings, um, sitting areas, uh, created an adult outdoor exercise area, um, and the, the new fences that we had to put in because of grade changes and so on are uh, a, attractive or not chain link fence, which is often, as you'll see, what NYCHA has done. And you can see here just this alley of trees that were beautiful, that were pruned, that the fences were taken down, the planting was, uh, was enhanced benches were added, uh, and I think it's just a much more attractive development. And as I said, we upgraded the facades. 
And now I'll talk about Harlem River houses. So our goals were to preserve, enhance, make more accessible, modernize the apartments, lower energy consumption, carbon footprint, improve resident amenities, improve security, abate lead and asbestos, and remediate mold. And first of all, it is, this is, we're part of a large design team with then uh, two developers, uh, Settlement Housing Fund and West Harlem Group Assistance Inc. A lot, the contractor is l &M Construction. The management company is CNC Management. And as I will talk about a bit, we work closely with the tenants associations for resident input. And so a number of decisions were made with feedback from the residents of what they wanted or what they preferred. So uh, this uh, most of the presentation I'm gonna give is what we gave to the Landmarks Commission, but then I'm going to talk about the interior. So I, on the left is what it, Harlem River looked like, houses when it opened. Uh, as you can see, the trees were very small. In the middle is what it looks like now. And on the right is the proposed where we've upgraded the windows, repaired the facade, uh, and done a lot of site work, which is not really shown in this photo. Uh, so here is an overall view. It really is on four blocks. Uh, 152nd Street was closed off, but if you can see my mouth, was created, bisects the site. And then on the Eastern block, although there are buildings, the buildings create a courtyard that reflects the termination of 152nd Street. Uh, the buildings were walk-up buildings, four and five story. Um, on the streets, there was commercial space that I will talk about. Uh, they created street walls, they created courtyards. Uh, for any of you know, it feels to me like people had been looking at the Amsterdam school from the 20s. Uh, and this was really wonderful housing. The 30s uh, public housing is so much better than much of the Tower and Park of the 50s and 60s or much more thoughtful. And so on the left is Mayor Fiola LaGuardia opening it. On the right is for the 50th anniversary is Mayor D Dinkins. Uh, below is the images that were done by the original architects, uh, large team of architects. And so here is what it looked like when it opened that uh, West 152nd Street uh, entrance in LA that then went to this uh, plaza in the middle. Uh, on the left is one of the playgrounds, which I'll talk more about. In the there were two playgrounds in the central courtyard, actually both the left and right. As you can see, the trees were fairly small in the 1930s. Here is what that central LA looks like today and that central courtyard. As you'll see when we talk about the plans, there was a lot of asphalt that has been used. None of the original lighting is left. There is uh, just a lot of stuff that has been done haphazardly to keep the buildings functioning and maintained, but not necessarily any comprehensive plan. Uh, and then here is more of the central courtyard. On the left, this is a passageway through to uh, the street. Uh, there is still a lot of the cobblestones. And then here uh, uh, on the Eastern building, there was both a playground and then this amphitheater, uh, which I'll talk about, which we're restoring a bit. Uh, here is what it looks like today. The amphitheater is basic, has, has some trees and has the slope, but does not have 
anything designed where people could sit and watch a performance. Uh, as you'll see in a lot of the images, uh, there were fences put around the playgrounds where they were sunken. The fences don't meet current code. On the left is what the retail space looked like in the 1930s, and on the right is what it looks like today. I should say that they made one of the spaces into a public library a few years ago, and that was the basis for what we are hoping to do for the storefront, the rest of the storefronts, and I'll talk about that later. There was an art program. So there were a number of sculptures, uh, as you can see, and there was a mural, the second photo in the upper left, it's not the best picture. There was a mural that got removed and painted over. As you can see, the mother and child, the mother has been decapitated. Uh, the penguins at the water play structure have disappeared. Uh, the laborer statue is in decent condition, but as part of our project, we're going to restore all of the existing artwork. And I think that's going to make a real difference and, and makes this space quite special. So let me now start talking about the site and landscape. So we have, this is the existing plan. As you can see here is the current plan and all that gray is asphalt. And here is our proposed plan where we're gonna get rid of a lot of the asphalt. The playgrounds will have appropriate safety surfaces. We're also, as I talk about, making the site much more accessible. Um, and so I'm gonna go through a lot of areas. So as I said, in terms of planting, a lot of the trees were really nice and uh, mature trees, but a lot of the other planting was missing and we will be uh, restoring or uh, doing more planting. In addition, we have to meet Enterprise Green Communities, which is like LEED, specifically meant for affordable housing and all the planting needs to be adaptive or native, adapted or native species. Uh, here are more issues of the pavement where you can see all the asphalt that's been put in. One of the problems is the cobblestones do not meet accessibility code. So we have to balance creating paths that uh, someone in a wheelchair or with a cane or walker can use with uh, keeping as much or restoring as much of the cobblestones as possible. And here are just some views of the fences all over the place. Uh, and, and I think one of the major things is we're doing a comprehensive restoration renovation. So we won't have 10 different types of fences. So as I said, the 152nd Street corridor is sort of the central, is, is the central access of the development. There's also up at 153rd Street, uh, both some parking, but also where the compacting dumpsters are and we're screening those, but uh, on these large NYCHA developments, typically the trash is collected from each building and put into a compacting dumpster that then sanitation collects. So on the left is what it looked like early on. And on the right is what it looks like now. And here are some of our details of what we're doing, where we're keeping cobblestones, we're adding planting, we're redoing the stairs so they meet the modern code for uh, rise run. And at the street entrance, we're putting in bollards that can be removed if you need access to prevent vehicular access. So the play, we have three playgrounds. Now let's talk about fencing. Uh, so here are some images on the left of what the playgrounds looked like in the 30s or 43. Uh, and on the right, what they look like today, the fence was put in because there were 
code issues of, or potentially kids jumping over the wall. The playgrounds, two of the playgrounds were sunken. It was there was no handicapped access. We did not have proper safety surfaces. We have to use modern play equipment that meets modern safety codes. So on the left is the original plan. On the right is the current plan. We're putting more grass and uh, cobblestones around the trees. Uh, up here, we're tucking in, if you can see it, a handicapped ramp. We're keeping the existing stairs, but this stair at the bottom is getting rebuilt to again be code compliant. Uh, we're then putting a, a new safety surface that meets current standards uh, and new play equipment. And here is the fencing we're using that both meets modern codes. I, I think I have a picture of what it looks like uh, farther along, but also uh, feels more appropriate for the development. And then here we are at the Eastern playground along with the um, amphitheater. And on the left was the original plan and on the right is our new plan where we'll have a playground with safety surface that is accessible. You can see the ramp up here. Uh, we're then keeping the trees in the amphitheater, but going to be putting in a series of benches and the bench and uh, some of the benches are accessible so that there can be performances uh, done in the amphitheater. And on the left is what on the upper left is one of the photos of the existing fences and both on the right and then the image of the photo of what the fences will look like. So where we need to do fences, we're doing something that is consistent, that is, I think, much more attractive than the chain link fence and will be consistent throughout the development. Excuse me, my lights went out. Um, have a motion sensor, sensor, so there we go. So then uh, we have a number of courtyards because one of the nice things about the site plan is it created uh, a number of courtyards. And so the uh, building one courtyard is actually not that different than the original. Uh, our plan on the left, you see it was a play area with gravel, which doesn't meet current standards. On the right, we're going to have more planted area. We're going to have chess tables and benches and some sitting area and paved area. Um, and and where uh, there's some new trees. Then the next one, as you can see, has largely been paved over for building five. And what we're going to do is uh, we're putting in more planting uh, and there are two trees there and then having a sitting area um, ag uh, again to make it more usable, attractive. And then the building five courtyard photo, as you can see here, has largely been taken over as parking. Parking is always an issue in the 30s. There was no parking. Uh, there needs to be some parking for staff, uh, et cetera. Um, and, but here again, we're uh, going to put in a lot more planting and then the paved areas will be uh, 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 unit pavers and I think much more attractive. Also note at the top, there is a daycare playground that is not in our scope, but we have to put a fence there because you have to protect the kids who are in daycare from somebody in a, this horrible world we live in potentially grabbing a child. So furniture, lighting and security and security and lighting are major issues for the residents. Uh, so on the left, you can see what it did look like uh, upper left on the right you can see that again there is a mismatch of benches 
uh, they're not consistent. Uh, and then we're proposing a metal bench that looks somewhat like the original benches, but is extremely durable because we want to keep use products that are going to hold up well. And just continuing uh, with the site furniture, uh, the metal benches we're using. In a number of buildings, we found rooms to do recycling and garbage, uh, or, but in a number of other, we don't have any space. And so we'll be putting recycling bins outside the entrances of uh, a number of the buildings. But again, consistent and attractive and secure. Uh, as you can see, there is none of the original lighting. I should note, and I'll talk a little more about it in the upper right, at each entrance, they had the address and they originally just had a bare light bulb behind it. And the copper addresses are intact. Uh, you can also see that security cameras have been put here and there around the development. And as part of the upgrade of security, they're going to be more inconsistent security cameras. Uh, as you can see from these photos, we have a real lighting problem. Issue with the current lighting, it just is not well lit. And this is both a problem residents feel it is not secure, but it also means the cameras don't work well. So none of the historic poles are there. We originally proposed these fixtures on the light, on the right, modern, energy efficient. We felt relatively innocuous. The one change the commission made was ask us to find something that was like the historic photos to get fixtures with the light spread, it was significantly more expensive. And in one sense, a little misleading because it uh, does not, you know, if you look at the Secretary of Interior Standards, if the original fabric is not there, you don't want to just recreate it. You want to make clear it's uh, modern, but this is what Landmarks wanted and we did it. And I understand the logic. Uh, Understand with all of these light fixtures, they're going to be painted the color of the walls, typically the red brick, so that they, they will largely disappear. And this fixture here will be put behind the metal uh, address. So at night, those will be lit very much like they were originally. So now I'll talk about building entries and also windows. So the entries weren't in bad condition, but uh, they need some love. Also, um, the original doors were wood. Those have long been replaced. The windows were originally um, casement windows. They were replaced with double hungs within fixed panels below. Uh, there were a number of different door original door layouts. So on the left is what it looks like now, and on the right is what we're going to do. We were not able to find any of the original paint to be able to try and see what it was. But in general, the entry, the entry, the, we're going to get rid of the green. It was clearly a dark color. We're going to remove the yellow paint on the side of the stairs. We're going to replace all the windows with casements that are very similar to the original windows. And the good thing about that is casement windows are more energy efficient than double hung because you can get a much better seal. Uh, now, storefront and signage. So this is what the storefronts look like now. And I'll be totally honest, we may not have the money to do what I'm going to talk about. Hopefully, we'll have enough contingency less. So on the left is the existing. Some of these pictures are just wonderful. On the right is what it looks like now. People have put roll-down grills. They've replaced the storefront. They've painted the uh, granite bases. 
the signing signage is inconsistent. Um, the concrete slab is not exposed, is covered up. Uh, we also have an issue that although people, you can see on the right here, an air conditioner, we need to have some louvers so that store for, that uh, retail spaces can put in air conditioning. So on the left is the historic facade. On the right is what we're proposing, where you can see we're, we're replacing the windows, we're, we, we're exposing the concrete slab. We have louvers above the doors for mechanical. We have a signage band with a signage that can be backlit. And so here is a uh, photo montage of what we hope it's like. We are stripping the paint on the granite to expose that. Uh, and um, we're hoping we'll be able to do this. So now I wanna go to interiors. And although the Landmarks Commission didn't care about the interiors, since we're getting historic building tax credits, SHPO did. So here is what one of the stair halls was like. Uh, and uh, the it was dark, it wasn't particularly well lit. I should note that those compact, the doors to the trash chute were very small. This is an issue we found in a lot of NYCHA developments. And we've been able to, and we are doing this here, put in a larger door within that same opening. So it's easier to put trash in. And here is a rendering, an image of what we're proposing. We're keeping the structural facing tile, cleaning it, uh, putting light ceilings in, which will make it lighter, putting in better lighting, painting the doors and stairs uh, attractively. And as you can see, putting in the larger trash uh, compactor door. As along with the uh, security cameras, et cetera, which you need in a modern, it, well, modern is the wrong word. Uh, the, there are three ways or four ways that security is improved. One is we put in better lighting. Two, there are lots of cameras. Three, there are typically uh, patrols done by the management and re residents coordinated with them. And four, there's coordination with the lo local police precinct. So on the left is a, one of these other great photos of what the kitchens looked like originally. On the right is what they looked like now. The cabinets were old, beat up, not much counter space. Uh, one of the nice things is they do have windows. All the kitchens and bathrooms have windows. And so here is what we're pl planning to do with a, a rendering of the kitchens with new cabinets, new counters, new stoves. Uh, this was an original scheme. We did a mock-up. Uh, this is a photo, and this is the what the residents picked. There were some choices in cabinets and counter colors uh, to give them uh, some say in what we did. Here are the bathrooms on the left of what they looked like originally, and then on the right, what they look like now. And then here is a rendering in the products we're planning to use as we repair and upgrade. And I should add, I mentioned mold before. There are two causes of mold, well, three. Leaks in the facade and roof, but also the plumbing often leaks. And so we're, in some cases, we're having to rip out the, open the walls, rip out the plumbing, put in new plumbing. That also raises lead and asbestos issues. Um, but anyway, when we're done, uh, it will be a relatively modern bathroom. All the fixtures will be low flow fixtures to minimize uh, water consumption and energy consumption. And that gets to the last thing. So Harlem River is co connected with Harlem River too on the right, uh, the bottom is what it looks like now. On the right is we're gonna overclad it. In both of these buildings, we're going to reduce the carbon by 55% now. And as the grid gets cleaner, uh, we will be, the, the, 
the carbon footprint will be continued to be redu reduced. The only thing we're not changing now is hot water will still be gas fired. But besides that, all the lighting will be energy efficient lighting. Uh, we're, um, and uh, we're not necessarily replacing all the stoves. And we're putting heat pumps in, which does two things. One is not only does it heat, but it also cools. And because of that, We'll be able to take all the air conditioners out of the windows. And if you were looking at all of the photos of what it looks like now, there are lots of air conditioners in the, in the windows. Uh, as just a final thought in moving ahead, these are three NYCHA buildings that we are renovating. The two on the left are on the National Register, and the one on the right is not. There are pluses of being on the National Register that you can get historic building tax credits. And as I said, money is a big issue. But at the same time, not being able to overclad, uh, do major modifications often to the lobbies and corridors is often a lost opportunity to uh, repair, modernize the buildings and make them um, good for the next 50 years. So with that, because I don't know the answer and we could all discuss that, uh, I wanna thank you. Uh, I'd love to take your questions and answer it. And we and our whole team and clients are very excited to be renovating Harlem River houses and bringing it back to the glory that it once was and should be. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, so we'll open it up now to any questions anyone may have. Um, if you have a question, feel free to speak up or if you wanna put it in the chat, that is fine as well. I'll keep the screen up so I can't see the chat. So Helen, if there are questions in the chat, please read sure. them to me. So we have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, um, why would you not expand inside the corridors, et cetera? What do you mean expand? Uh, well, first of all, with the historic tax credits, we really had to leave the corridors as is and keep as much of the original fabric as possible. So we really couldn't expand into them. Uh, we were trying to run a lot of the lines for the heat pumps in the corridors, but that didn't work well. We also had handicap clearances. One of the asides is although the none of the units are accessible, we're having to make 5% of the units modify them. So in the units are accessible to meet uh, accessibility codes, which I don't think makes much sense. We originally were going to do all the accessible units in the tower a block away, which has an elevator and would be fully accessible. But uh, we uh, had as required NYCHA to do that here. Obviously in the site, we've made the site much more accessible. Um, an interesting question. Um, so in consideration of the Grenfell uh, Tower in London and that horrible disaster, uh, someone asked what were the lessons learned in regards to overcladding? That's a good question and I've looked at Grenfell a bit, and it was a combination of more problems than one could imagine. So one of them was they used a combustible insulation that we can't use here and we can't detail. They did not properly fire stop the units. Uh, there was only one means of egress. Uh, and uh, when we overclad, we have to, as a baseline, meet NFPA 285, which is specifically designed, has requirements. Basically, what you're most worried about is the fire blowing out a window and then burning up the facade. And so by doing this around the openings, we are making it much harder for a fire to spread. Uh, in addition, um, the... Um, Insulation here is treated with a fire retardant, so it will not self-ignite. Um, 
I would also add that in the new code, there are going to be additional requirements of fire stopping on every floor uh, if you have any combustible material. But we 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 followed code and it at least met, if not exceeded, and the American code. Well, there are two things. From what I understand, Grenfell didn't meet their codes, but the U.S. codes, from what I understand, are significantly uh, more restrictive. And this was a early question, um, and you and you may have uh, adequately um, defined it, but just. Uh, for, you know, just to be clear, um, could you uh, explain what PACT, P-A-C-T, stands for? Oh, God, someone was going <laughs> to ask, ask this. I know RAD is Rental Assistance Demonstration. PACT is, I, I, I should know it, and uh, uh, if... <laughs> If I stop sharing, I can Google it and give you the answer <laughs> in one second. Uh, 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 so, because uh, uh, I should know that, but I obviously don't. So let me Google that and give you. Obviously, there might. Uh, Um, because I okay, here we go. Permanent affordable commitment together. I knew the affordable and commitment were in there, but uh, anyway, and one of the interesting things about PACT and on the more recent round, uh, because we've made a number of proposals. The residents are very involved in selecting the developer and very involved in the whole process, uh, and um, which is really good. And they have strong opinions, which is also really good. And they also know their developments much better than we do. Uh, and with the, um, the new program that NYCHA has, residents are gonna be given choices of what programs they go into. Um, and I can just add the development next to Baychester Murphy, uh, Edenwald houses, we're now working on, and those residents wanted, it's the same development team, we're so happy with what we did at Baychester Murphy that they wanted the same team to work on their houses. So I know their concerns about PAC, uh, and I can address some of them, but they're also many residents who seem to be very happy once their buildings are renovated and privately operated. Okay. Um, so a related question um, is, you mentioned lighting and security as big issues for tenants associations. What were some of the other ways residents participated in your planning? Uh, our client met with them, I think it was on a monthly basis talking, showing the development of the plans, what they were doing, uh, asking questions. Uh, as I said, uh, in the more recent packs, it's even more so, but there is very extensive resident engagement, uh, updating. And quite honestly, these renovations are largely done with residents in place. We may have to get people out at Harlem River to do the lead remediation, uh, but the it, 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 that's no fun. Having I lived in an uh, I was in an office building where they were repairing the facade, and it sometimes felt like you were in a dentist's office. And our construction partner uh, has been very good at having. Um, uh, apartments that are renovated that people can go to during the day while their apartment is renovated. But sometimes people want to be there to make sure their possessions are protected. Uh, they're, um, uh, but just working with the residents, letting them know when they're going to work in, the pro in their apartment, coordinating the time. It's really important 
Uh, it isn't easy, and I'm the first to say it can be disruptive, but having good communications is really critical to for everyone to get through it and for people not to be surprised. And have you received feedback from the residents on the work that you did in Baychester? Are they? Well, all I can tell you is we did a tour with the head of the Residents Association and she was gushing. Now, I can't tell you what every resident in the development thinks, but the feedback we got was positive. And I have to say, often as an architect, we don't get much feedback. So I can't fully tell you, but in general, we got positive. And as I said, Edenwald next door to Baychester Murphy basically said, we want to have what they had, which is, I think, a positive reference. Absolutely. Um, okay. If, if uh, are, are there any other questions? I'm not seeing anything. Um, although th there are uh, lots of comments of people thanking you um, and saying that everything uh, looks good and to keep up the great work. So thank you well, so much for sharing with us today. Uh, and, and thank you everyone for joining us. Have a great evening. And thank you. And if people have more questions and they send them to you, Helen, just email them to me and I'll try and answer. I'd be happy to. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care.